David Smith here with another flipped classroom math video. A few tips before we start. Remember that you can speed up or slow down the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to catch up with your notes or to try the problems before I explain. Lastly, you can turn on the captions and follow along with my words on the bottom of your screen. Today's topic, sets and Venn diagrams. And this is a technique where we can use a visual method to show how sets relate to each other, which sets are subsets of other sets, and how sets might share elements. So let's get started. So I've drawn a real basic Venn diagram with definitions here. We'll go through that, and then we'll start working through some examples where we actually put numbers in there. So this area right here, that's the Venn diagram. It's got a rectangle on the outside and at least one circle inside. You'll notice that we have some letters here. U stands for the universal set, and that's represented by the rectangle. So the rectangle shows some universal set U defined by the situation. So you might get something like all integers greater than 6, or you might get something like all real numbers. Could be anything you want. The circle inside is some subset um, A. Notice how I put A there. So some subset A of U. So whatever you put in this circle is, has to be in the universal set. Okay? So these are your, some of your definitions. Let's talk about how that might look in life. Like in a high school, we might define our universal set as all students. So the rectangle represents all the students at our high school. We might define A, our subset, as all the boys. So if we were to populate this with the actual individuals, we'd put the names of all the boys inside the A circle because they're that subset, and the girls' names would be all out here because they are in our universal set. Okay, let's do a straightforward example. So the first thing we need before we can define and draw our Venn diagram is we need to know what universal set we're working with and then what our subset is. So I've put that up here. In this problem, our universal set is a set of all x such that x is less than or equal to 10 and x is a member of the positive integers. Where z is the symbol for integers, we put a plus there, that means we only want the positive integers. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and we don't get bigger than 10. We can be 10. It's less than or equal to 10. Okay? So that's our universal set. That's going to be the whole rectangle of our Venn diagram. Now our subset here is going to be just these four numbers. S is 2, 4, 6, and 7. So there's four numbers. So we can already see that S is entirely contained within our universal set because all these numbers fit this requirement. They're less than or equal to 10, and they're a member of the positive integers. So we have a good setup to draw a nice Venn diagram. Okay, so our first thing here, let's draw our rectangle. And I recommend make these big. Give yourself some room. Paper's cheap. I'm going to draw my U here. So that, rep that tells us that the uh, rectangle is the universal set. Now I'm going to put my subset. I know it's entirely contained within our universal set, so that it allows me to draw it inside the rectangle. And I'll label that S. And now I can start adding numbers. So the subset is the easiest one because we know what's in S. It's 2, 4, 6, and 7. So we've added those to S. Now we're not done because we need to show where the other members of U are. So what members of this universal set are not in S? And that would be the number 1. We have Because remember, it's 1 through 10, including 10. So whatever's not in here goes in this area out here. So 1, we need that. We have 2. We need 3. We have 4. We need 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's it. So this is a correct Venn diagram for this situation where our universal set is described as so. Here's our subset. We've put the subset inside 
wholly contained inside the universal set, and then we throw in the remaining members of the universal set that are not in the subset. Okay, so let's take a look at our four main sets that we've been dealing with in this chapter and throw them onto a Venn diagram that shows where each lie. And the interesting thing to know is that our real number set contains all three of these. So, in a way, each of these sets is more restrictively defined, so it's a subset of another more easily defined set. So, in this case, R, real numbers, is the most broadly defined set of all four of these, so R will be our universal set. So I'm going to put R out there. So that tells us that the whole rectangle is real numbers. Now the next one is Q. These are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, so fractions or decimals go in here. These are not um, decimals that never repeat, like irrational numbers like pi and things like that. Um, but they are, these are the rational numbers. So what we can do, make a big old circle here and put Q there. So Q is wholly contained inside R, or the rational numbers are completely contained within the real numbers. Okay? Remember, real numbers are numbers that can be shown on the, on the number line. Okay, so Q is rational numbers. Now the next least restrictive set would be our integers. And they will go inside rational numbers, and that's the Z. And so some numbers are rational, but they're not integers. Like 1 half, that's a rational number. It's being expressed as a fraction, but it's not an integer. So that, so that would go right in there. And then our last, our most restrictive set is the natural numbers. That's like the counting numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, going all the way in the positive direction. So that's the last circle inside, and that's n. Okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm showing these four number sets that we've been dealing with in this chapter on a Venn diagram. So to review, the natural numbers are completely contained within the integers. The integers have more, but the natural numbers, every natural number is indeed an integer. Now the integers are, um, contain the natural numbers, but also the negative numbers. So it's a wider, wider defined set, has more things in it, and the uh, integers is, are completely contained within the rational numbers. Then we move out, rational numbers, numbers that can be expressed as fractions, those are completely contained within the real numbers. Okay, let's take a look at where some numbers might fall in this particular Venn diagram. I've written down a bunch here. I've got 8, negative 2, 3 quarters, square root of 2, 1.25, and 400. So if you want to try this, pause the video right now and take those numbers and put them in the Venn diagram where they belong, okay? All right, so let's take a look. Um, and the idea here is let's be as specific as we can. They're all real numbers. All of those are real numbers. So you could put them in this outer area, but we can be more specific with some of them. So the 8, that's a positive integer, which is a natural number. So the 8 goes there. The negative 2, it's not a natural number because it's negative. So that's going to be out here in integers. 3 quarters, that's a fraction. It's not a natural number or an integer, so that's out here in the Q circle. Square root of 2, that is an irrational number. If you put square root of 2 in your calculator, you'll get a decimal that expands forever, never repeats. That is a real number. It can be shown on the number line. So root 2 goes out there. How about 1.25? Where does that go? That's a decimal which can always be written as a fraction, or almost always be written as a fraction. So that would be a Q. So this is 1.25, goes there. And then our last one, 400. What's that? That's a natural number. It's a positive integer, which is a natural number. So we can put that right there. Okay, so far, we've only talked about sets that have subsets, that have all the members that are inside the larger set. Now we're going to talk about intersection. So this is where 
Two sets might share some common elements, but other elements are not shared. So here's a definition for an intersection. They happen with sets that share common elements. That's pretty straightforward. And u, so let's do an example. We're going to use this universal set, set of all x, such that x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 12. And x is an element of the integers. Okay? So pretty much 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12. That's what our universal set is. Now I've defined two sets for you, A and B. These are both subsets of U, and you can see that they don't have any numbers that are not integers between 0 and 12. That's A and B contain all of those integers. So they are a subset of the universal set. That tells us that we can draw a Venn diagram. So now what we're going to do is draw that. Now before I do that, like if this was a problem I just said illustrate with a Venn diagram, I need to take a closer look at my A and my B, my two subsets. I need to check and see if they have elements in common because that will influence how I draw my Venn diagram. So let's get our rectangle out there first and mark that as U. So there's my rectangle. Now I have two subsets, I'm going to draw two circles in here. So let's take a look. Two, no that's not in B, oops. Three is in B, as is seven. So it looks like I have two elements that are in both A and B. So here's how you draw their circles. Makes sense. There's an intersection of these two sets, and the circles have an intersection. Pretty, pretty intuitive. Okay, so now I need to throw all the numbers that were being talked about. So basically, the universal set, I need to have all the numbers from this universal set on this Venn diagram. And I have four different regions. I have the outside region. Those are all the numbers that are not in A and B. I have A and B, and then I have the numbers that are in both A and B. Oftentimes, with these, it's easiest to work inside out. So let's do that. A and B both have a 3 and a 7. So the 3 and the 7 go there. Oh, let's get a label on there. There's my A and there's my B. Okay. Now, what's in A that's not in B? So my 3 and my 7 are already represented. So I have a 2, a 5, and an 11. So 2, 5, and 11. So now, all five of my elements from set A are inside the set A circle. Okay? It's just that two of them are also inside the B circle because they are indeed in set B. Okay, let's get B's remaining elements into the circle that's not part of the intersection. So I have a 1, that's not represented yet. Then the 3, that's there. I have a 6, the 7 is inside, and I have an 8. Okay, so now I have the five elements of B are fully contained in the B circle with the two elements that are also in A in the intersection zone. Okay? So this is the idea of an intersection. And we show it graphically on a Venn diagram in a pretty clear way. Now do you think we're done? If you said no, you're right. We still have some more elements of the universal set that we have not put on our Venn diagram. Namely, all the integers between 0 and 12 that are not in A or B. So let's take a look. Do we have 0 represented in A or B? We do not. So let's put 0 on there somewhere. 1. We've got our 1. we got our 2. we got our 3. There's no 4 in A or B, so 4 has to be outside. 5 we've got. 6 we've got. 7 we have. 8 we have. But we don't have 9 and 10. So here's 9. Here's 10. And anything else? Do we need any more? Yeah, we need 12. X can be equal to 12, so let's throw that on there. Now that you've finished, take a moment to write down any questions so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to improve your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.